Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of Tier Basics. Today we're looking at IO, that's inputs and outputs. We'll be setting them up on the PLC and also looking at how to set them up physically on the PLC itself as well. So let's open up Colin and have a play shall we? First thing we're going to do is come in to the device configuration, open him up and we're going to have a look at what we're actually playing with. So I'm going to zoom in a little and we can see our IO is here. So we have our eyes up here and we have our cues, which are our outputs down here. So inputs, outputs, um, like cut to a shot of the actual PLC for this. Um, but basically when we have something like a switch, float switch, whatever, um, I can go into these, it can be on or off, uh, it can't be halfway. We'll get into analog inputs, which can be a range of values uh, another day. But for now, we're just looking at digital inputs, which are these guys, and digital outputs, which are these guys. So this is turning something on or off in the real world. So we're going to start by having a look at these actually inside of the PLC. So we're going to come on to general and we're going to come down and find our DI. This be a bit different depending on what PLC you have. I have a 1215C here, so that I've got some digital inputs, some digital outputs, and some analog as well. Like I say, we'll do those another day. So if we open up this, they'll see a whole, a whole load of information, most of which we don't really need to worry about at all. What we do want to have a look at, though, is the I.O. addresses. So these are the memory addresses that the inputs and outputs start at. So I've got these just set as, um, well, oh, this should be zero. Okay, so this is how I usually have it set up, especially on the, the actual CPU. And I wanted to have a chat about this because when you add modules to the side, so say you buy another um, input module or an output module, those numbers don't always add up. And if you're jumping through memory, you might just want to index through incrementally um, for whatever reason. And if these all go from like 0 0.1, blah, 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 and then just suddenly jump to 7.1, um, it kind of throws you off a little. Uh, but this is where you would set that. So you can see our input addresses are here. If I change this to a 10, let's say, you can now see up here, we've actually... Uh, change the name, change the place, sorry, in memory of uh, where we're looking at for these inputs and it'll be the same on the outputs as well. So I'm going to change that back to zero. So now our inputs are starting at I 0, 0.0 and going up and our outputs are starting at Q 0, 0.0 and going up. So Q is, I guess you call it shorthand for output. So if you see DQ, uh, just see it as um, digital out. What we're also going to do is have a quick look in the IO tags. Um, so this is from a previous video where we uh, initiated the clock memory and the system memory. So we've got these in the tag table already. And you can see down here, we already have all of our inputs, all of our outputs. And like I say, on the 1215C, we've got a couple of analog ins and a couple of analog outs, which we'll be touching on another day. But we don't have any names given to these. We can address these directly. So if I just type in percentage I 0, .0 and turn that on, we would actually turn on this output here. But just to make it easier for yourself, it's good good practice to name these like pump one or you know, whatever you want. Probably not a good idea if it's not a pump, but you know, what am I to say? So now we're going to jump to the PLC and have a quick look at how we set that up physically. So this is the old girl in the flesh. Uh, apologies about the mess everywhere. This is our dev PLC, so it's rebuilt pretty much daily. And also, spoiler alert, we're doing VFDs in the future. But for now, uh, this is our 1215C, DC, DC, DC. Now it's called DC, DC, DC because they really want you to know that it is DC. So this is our DC transformer here and we are taking that DC and putting it into the PLC where it is so badly desired. 
This DC is then broken over um, into all of these switches here. So these switches are just a nice little circuit board. So when we throw them, we can actually throw some of the inputs like that. It's just a little, little dev kit thing, nice and fun. Um, something that is worth noting though, when you do add more modules, they plug in down here. Um, so it'll pull the power for the actual module itself, but it won't pull the field device power. You need to grab that from this and jump it over on cables. Uh, it doesn't pull the field device stuff over through that little side thing, just something to bear in mind. Um, but yeah, when you pop 24 volts DC in any of these terminals, you get a Boolean one. Easy as that. Now, it is very similar for the outputs. So I've already hooked up the outputs for just a little thing I'm going to show you in a short while, but if we look at Colin's skirt, sorry Colin, wrong one. Um, so these are our outputs. So what I have done here is very crudely hooked up power to the, uh, to the line and the ground terminals. See if I can get this thing to focus. There we go. So 24 volts in and common and each of these individual green lines in the terminals, these are on our Q0 uh, through three out to three lights. So these lights are all commoned together. So this copper wire links all of the commons and that goes back up over this cable here and the signal voltages come out to here. So when we turn one of these on, um, 24 volts comes down here, through the light, back through the common, back to the PLC. So that is uh, set up as what we call source. Okie dokie, so this is us back inside Colin now. Um, what we're gonna do is start naming up some of, these, uh, some of these tags so we can use them in the program. So we're gonna go to the default tag table. In fact, no, let's be good, let's uh, make a new tag table. And we're going to call this IO, just to simplify things. So in IO, what we're going to do is just do the switches. So I know we've got more, but we're just going to do the eight switches we have. So I'm going to show you a cute little trick here. We're going to call this switch one. Data type is a bool and automatically it's put the input address uh, starting at 0.0. .0. So that's the first switch, and we could just write all of these in down, but because you know, it doesn't work all the time, it depends where it is, but generally if the number's at the end, you can just get this, drag it down, and it should auto-increment that number. There we go. So we have eight switches, so I'm just gonna get rid of these guys, and we're gonna do the same for the outputs as well. So this would be the same thing, Boolean, but instead of it being an I, it is now an output. So we can come in here and change this to Q for output. So I is input, Q is output, M is memory, which we'll be touching on in other videos. And we're gonna start this um, address one, sorry, address zero it should be, and bit zero for output already used by another tag. I know what this is. This is me setting up the lights. Just give me a second. Okay, yeah, that was already in use because I'd, uh, I'd been setting up the lights in the background. So let's copy these down. We've only got four. That's all I could find in my drawers. There we go. So now we've given names to the inputs and the outputs that we want to address so we can use them a bit better um, in real life. So I'm gonna go away now, uh, make a quick program just to make some lights look pretty. So cue the jazz. Okay, so what we've done here is just put our switch controlling a function block. So this switch is an actual input, it's not in memory and this is controlling a function block. Now this will all come, this will make way more sense in future videos. I've just done this to, to 
for, for a pretty little thing right now. But as way of introduction, we can see this switch is green, so it's firing off this function block that we've made. Inside of this function block is this set here. Now, again, don't worry if you don't know what any of these do. That's absolutely fine. All I've done is just made this little thing that increments, and as it increments through, it just changes which output is on at any particular time. So you can see here we have Q0.0, 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. There are four lights, and we're just iterating through those and repeating that loop. Very, very simple, but like I say, we'll come to this in the other videos. So we've got this all hooked up, all nice and pretty. I moved the lights up so you can see. Uh, program is running now, but it's not doing anything because the switch is down. So if we flick switch one up, we can see it's iterating through which output is on. Looks very Christmassy, doesn't it? And off. And when the switch goes off, it just stays on whatever light it is on in that particular part of the loop. Hours of fun. Oh, that's everything for this video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.